Hi guys, I'm Marcus Lapp with the Indie Music Lab, and today we're going to break down the song Heathens by 21 Pilots. Now, I'm not going to dissect the entirety of the song, but I do want to focus on a few of the main elements that I believe make the song special and make it stand out. My approach to doing videos like this is simply to give you guys fun and interesting ideas that you can then take and implement and experiment with in your own productions. Now, this is my very first breakdown video, and as I continue to do videos like this, I'm going to experiment with different things and see what sticks and what doesn't. So please let me know in the comments what song you would like me to break down next. And also, don't forget to download my free PDF. It's called A 5-Step Guide to Producing Wow Factor Indie Music. It's in the description below. It's absolutely free. You should go check that out as well. All right, enough of me gibbering on. Let's dive in to the breakdown. All right, guys, so I'm in my Studio One session here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to play it from start to finish. I didn't map out the whole song. I just recreated a couple of the main sections of the song. And so the first thing I'm going to do now is just play it from start to finish what we have here. And then I'll break down my thought process and what went into each track. So here's the song from start to finish. All my friends are heathens, take it slow. So yeah, that's what my recreation of this song by 21 Pilots sounds like. And so what I'm going to do now is just go step by step, track by track, and show you what I did with each track and what went into it. So we'll start off with the intro. So in the intro, we've got the lead vocal, we've got the piano chords, and then we've got this robot vocal that sits behind the lead vocal or on top of however you want to think about it. And yeah, so we've got just those three elements. All my friends are heathens, take it slow. Wait for them to ask you who you know. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is this piano section. Now, the chord progression is a 1-6-3 chord progression, which we're in the key of C major, so that would be the 1 would be the C major, the 6 would be the A minor, and the 3 would be the E minor. Now, there's one distinct thing that's happening with this chord progression that's keeping it from sounding boring and bland, and that is this B note right here. Notice how it's playing with every single note. No matter which chord is being played, this B note is playing the entire time. Now, I could think of it as, okay, I'm doing a C major 7 to start, and then I'm going to like an A minor 9, and then we're doing like an E minor, which the B belongs in the E minor, so that makes sense, right? But it's like instead of thinking in that way, I prefer to think, okay, we're going C major to A minor to E minor, but is there a note that we can sustain and introduce some tension that can be played throughout the entire section. And that's where this B note comes in. So if you listen. Oh my friends are heathens, take it slow. Da, da, wait for them to like it's there the whole time. It and it really helps just just to give it some tension and to solidify that chord progression for this song. <laughs> Excuse my dog, by the way. He's going nuts in the other room. No idea why. All right, so now let's look at the effects that I've got on this piano. So, let me play it here. Now, if you listen to the original, you can tell it has this pitchy, kind of haunting kind of effect to it. And so what it did to achieve that was introduce this pitch shifter here, which is making such a big difference. So if, if I take all of these 
plugins off. Sounds way too clean, right? So the main thing that's happening here is this pitch shifter, and this is really giving it some haunting pitchiness that we are looking for. If I turn the mix knob up, Yeah, so that's what it sounds like if it if that effect is ex exaggerated. Now you can achieve this kind of sound with plugins like a flanger or even a chorus maybe. Um, I got this plugin, this is from a Slate Digital All Access subscription, which comes with a bunch of amazing plugins and I use so many of them all the time. But again, there this isn't the only plugin that you can use. There's a lot of different pitch plugins that you can use to manipulate that sound to get that haunting kind of effect. This is what I ended up using for this. And then the other thing that's happening here is, is I've got some OTT. So this is um, a free plugin by X for Records. Um, I think OTT stands for over the top. That's always what I've assumed, but I'm probably wrong about that. I have no idea. But that's basically what it is. It's an over the top multiband compressor. Now, the only knob that I really ever use is this depth knob. And what this really does, so the purpose for this plugin is to simply bring this track further front to the mix so it's not so far back. So here's with it and here's without it. It just brightens it up, compresses it, brings it to the forefront a little bit more. And if I were to take this depth knob the whole way up, it would sound like this. So then I'll just dial that back. Usually I'll dial this in between 10 and 30% on the depth and I usually won't touch any of the other knobs with this plugin. So, And then I've got an EQ on this as well. Um, and I'm just cutting away everything from 2K and up um, because everything I want the vocal to really stand out in this range right here. Uh, I took the piano away from there. That way that vocal can really take precedence um, in that spot. So that's why I did that with the EQ. And now let's hop over to the lead vocal. And if I take all of the plugins off, this is what it sounds like. All my friends are heathens, take it slow. Wait for them to ask you who you know. So that's just the dry vocal. So now I'll go step by step and show you what I did with each individual plugin. So the first thing we have here is a gate. Now, the reason I have this on here is to, it's like an automated edit, essentially. Oh, my friends are so what's happening, take it slow. So what's happening is between phrases when there is no volume, this gate is sensing that and it's decreasing the overall track volume just to get rid of any room noise that might be there that we don't want in between phrases. Now, if I'm doing an official song that I'm going to release, I will usually go in and edit this manually. Um, just, I just like doing that rather than using a gate. But in certain instances, I, st I will still use a gate, especially for a song like this that I'm not releasing. I'm just doing as a tutorial. Um, I just threw a gate on there just to clean that up a little bit. Now, the next thing we have is the Waves Auto-Tune. Um, this is, yeah, it's the Waves Tune real time. Um, and that sounds, oh, my friends so I've got are it, take it slow. I've got it pretty tight. I've got it, you know, 13 milliseconds on the speed and around 25 on the note transition. And I've got it set to the right key. So C major. Oh, my friends are heathens, take it slow. It. Wait for them to ask you who you know. Please don't make. So this song has a very pop kind of feel to it. So I definitely knew I wanted to throw some auto tune on there just to really tighten and sweeten up that vocal. So after that, I've got the EQ. I'm just making one cut here. It's around 345 hertz. Um, I'll do this on almost every vocal and on a lot of like guitars and things like that as well, where this is the muddy area between 200 and 500 is where you deal is where you deal with a lot of that mud and that murkiness uh, in your tracks. And almost on every vocal, I will always make some sort of cut between 200 and 500 hertz. Um, so here I did a three and a half dB cut around 350 and that is helping to get rid of some of that mud down there. Oh, 
my friends are heathens, take it slow. Here's without it. Wait for them to ask you who you know. Yeah, so that cleans that up a little bit. After that, I've got a compressor on here. And this is just a very basic compressor setting. The reason I have this compressor here in this instance of this compressor is simply to just start balancing out the volume. So this is to mainly cut out, or not cut out, but bring down the volume of any peaks and loud volume parts of my vocal so that we can get a little bit more consistency. So I've got it you know, at a two to one ratio and it's doing my about friends are heathens, take it you know, slow. two to three D, uh, dB of gain reduction. Wait for them to ask happening you there. I've got a know. fast attack and a Please medium don't release on this one. Any so and then after that, I've got the virtual tape machine, uh, which is by Slate Digital. Uh, this is a great plug into if if you want to just warm up your tracks a little bit so this is emulating an a tape machine that they would use in the old days and this helps give it a little bit more of that warm sound and so i've got that Sudden moves. you don't know the half of the it just helps warm it up a little bit then we've got the virtual mix rack here uh, which i just i was just doing some more compression so this is all so i've got three compressors back to back to back now there's a reason i didn't do it all in one compressor and that's because generally speaking you're going to get a better sound if you spread out your compression with multiple compressors instead of doing all the compression in one fell swoop it, it it'll usually sound smoother and better if you just do 3 to 6 db here, 3 to 6 db there, and then use multiple compressors to get the sound that you want. And like on two of these, these first two here, I'm doing a blend, so which is so it's like a parallel where I'm using the mix knob where it's only compressing where only half the signal that's going through this is actually being compressed and then the rest of the half is not compressed. And then I've got this last one here where I went the full 100. So let's take a look at how that looks. All my friends are heathens, so take it slow. Three to six here, but again, that's only Wait half. Wait for them to mix ask you who Same you here, know. Same here, mix it half again. And then here we've got Please full, don't and it's doing about three dB of gain reduction moves. there. All right, and then after that, we've got another virtual mix rack here. And here I've just got another EQ, which I just made a little boost just to give a little bit more high end. Uh, I've got a two and a half boost at around 6K. And then I also got did a cut um, around 1.5K, which is often where I get that. With my voice in particular, I've noticed that often between 1 and 1.5K, there's this weird nasal tone that can cut through a little bit too much. And so I'll usually make a cut somewhere in there. And that's what's happening there. And then I've got a little bit of this Revival plugin, which is basically just a really high end, what's, uh, what's called a harmonic exciter. So it just turns up. It basically, it's like a, it's like a high-end saturator, essentially. Oh my friends this. are heathens, take it slow. Just adding a little bit of shimmer on that high end. And then after that, I've just got a de on there. So that's what's happening with the vocal. And um, now let's look at the sends and the, what I'm sending this vocal to. So I've got a vocal plate, which is being sent right here, so I've got Little Plate. This is a free, or actually it's not free. It was free when they first released it, and I got it then. Lucky for me, but this is a fantastic one knob reverb, which is why I love it, because it sounds so good, and it's so applicable to, if, if, if I want just a straight up, straightforward plate reverb, this is my go-to reverb to slap on here. So um, I've got it around 2.5 seconds for the decay, uh, mix obviously all the way wet since we're on a return track and then I've got the low cut up at around two o'clock on this knob and then the vocal sounds like this with the reverb all my friends are heathens take it slow so that really helps give it some space there and then the next thing I did on that lead vocal is um, sent it to a quarter note delay so which we have over here and what we have here is a delay. This is also comes with that Slate Digital All Access Pass. Like I said, I use so many of their plugins. So you should check them out, by the way. It's very inexpensive and they have so many incredible plugins. Now, um, I did a quarter note delay. I used a murky delay preset, which is a very like warm delay and I really love the way it sounded. 
with All this vocal. Friends are take it slow. And also um, turned on the ping pong effect. That way it balances between the right and the left. And that's what helps give it some extra movement as well. Wait for them to ask you who you know. And then after the delay, I've got a reverb um, on that delay with the dry and wet at about 40%. So this is just giving some extra space to that delayed vocal to give it some some reverb on that. Now this is a Lustrous Plates is also by, you guessed it, comes with the Slate Digital All Access Pass. And I um, set this, I think, I, yeah, I used a long thin vocal preset and um, turned down the dry and wet to about 40% and just ran with that and I love the way that sounded. All right, and then after that we've got this compressor. Now this is a sidechain compressor that we have here. And the reason that this is on here is because whenever the vocal is performing, it is ducking the volume or it's turning down the volume automatically on the delay track. That way the delay doesn't fight with the lead vocal. So you can see here with this bar here, Oh my friends, it's turning down the volume of the delay track. As soon as that stops, then the delay track comes Wait back to full volume. To ask you who you know. And that's a really good way to um, keep your vocals and your vocal delays from fighting with each other. And I use, I definitely recommend this technique and using a sidechain to duck the delays to get them out of the way of the lead vocal, and then that way they can come back up to full volume. Um, in those vocal breaks between lines. Now the next thing that that the vocal is being sent to is a doubler. I can definitely hear this on the original um, on Tyler Joseph's vocal. He, he definitely has some type of doubling effect and so I just used the standard waves doubler to get this effect um, that we have here. I just went with the doubler 4 preset and I don't even have anything else on it, just the plain doubler and here's what it sounds like without it. Please don't make and with any it, sudden moves. It just helps, gives it a little bit of that crispness and um, the sound and widens up that sound just a little bit more. And then the last send that we're sending this lead vocal to is a slap delay. So that sounds like this. All my friends are heathens, so take it slow. Wait for them to ask you who you know. And that slap delay is just a straight up. Uh, I'm using repeater again, and I use the vintage tape slapback preset and ran with that and put some spread on it as well. So yeah, that is all. So that's it for the lead vocal. Now let's jump over to this robot vocal that we got going here. So. All my friends are here. Okay, so with this robot vocal, there's a lot of things happening here. So the first thing is, I recorded the take just sounding like, Oh, my friends are heathens, take it slow. That's how I recorded it in, just a straight up monotone, one octave down. And then what I did was I went, uh, the first thing I'm doing is Little Ultra Boy. Now I went to the robot mode, which in robot mode with Little Ultra Boy is, it stays the same note every time, so you just need to find the pitch that you're looking for. And then I turn the formant, which this knob here is like, the knob that makes you sound like this, or that makes you sound like this. And so um, I was up to around five. All my friends are here, the track is slow. Wait for them to ask you who Yeah, so that's what we got going there. So let's go step by step with these plugins. So after that, I've got an EQ, just making a cut around 5K. This cut here is simply just to make room for that lead vocal to live in so it doesn't interfere as much with the lead vocal. That's why that EQ is on there. Then I've got some micro shift, which is kind of like a doubler, except it's a little bit more of a fancy, fancier sounding doubler. And uh, this is also by Sound Toys, which in my opinion, Sound Toys makes the best effects. If you want really cool effects, like delays, really cool distortions, and really creative effects, Sound Toys is the way to go. Now I've got the mix all the way wet. I just went with basically standard settings and um, love the way it sounded. Heathens, take it slow. There's without it. Wait for it. them to ask you who you know. So yeah, that helps widen it up and give it a little bit more of that chorusy effect. 
And then after that, I've got a delay on here by repeater and I've got the mix at around 45%. This is like a really quick, almost almost like a slap delay where it's it's acting as a as just another widener. So it's widening up this even more, widening this up even more. There's with it. So that helps widen it up even more. After that, I've got a reverb on here. So I've got a nice long reverb on this. Dry and wet at around 35 to 40%. And then after that, I've got a compressor. And that's just helping to, to tame any peaks that might be coming through uh, this track. And just to help make it more consistent so the volume stays more consistent. So, and yeah, so that's all that's happening there. Let me get rid of this because this was muted anyway, since I have a reverb directly on there. And that's all that's happening with that. So now that we've got that intro section down, now let's hop over to the chorus section where we're implementing a few new elements. All my friends are heathens, take it slow. All right, so let's first take a look at these drums that are happening here. So now this, let me go into a little bit about my thought process when trying to recreate this from the original. I'm not trying to get it perfect. That's not the point. What we're doing here is we're growing our skills and becoming better at, at listening and knowing what we're listening to. So when we get inspired by a certain sound or a certain song, we know how to fuel that into the, our own productions and that is why I'm doing this and I think that's why it's really helpful to do remakes like this is because it really helps you think about okay well, sonically what is happening that inspires me that is what is happening that m is making this song sound so good and sound so special and sound so unique and then finding ways in which you can get in the ballpark and get close to that sound so the what I did here with the drums was I've knew that it didn't sound like it was fully acoustic drums and it didn't sound like it was fully electronic drums. So I figured, okay, it's probably, it'll probably sound best if I do a, some combination of the two. So I started out with just the basic beat on a normal drum kit. Now this is a plug-in, uh, this is Addictive Drums, which I use for all of almost all of my acoustic drum sounds. If I want an acoustic drum sound, I just went with a preset here and I may have adjusted some things just to get it the sound to sound the way I wanted it to. And then what I did was I blended that with electronic drums, which we've got here. So we've got a kick that I pulled in from my library. Got this snare and this hi-hat. And then I copied the exact same pattern over from this drum um, track to this drum track to where this sounds like this. And then together. And I really like the way it sounded, and so I rolled with it. So that's what the drums so that's what the drums are doing um, in this section. All my friends are heathens, take it slow. And then uh, let's move on to the bass here. So let's start with the sub bass. This is just a very basic sub bass. And I think I just used a sine wave. I've, I already bounced down some of these tracks to audio to save on CPU because I'm still using a 2012 MacBook. So it's, I'm having to do this sometimes. So I got a sub bass um, that is it's basically, it was just a straight up sine wave um, that I moved down a couple octaves. And then I put some saturation on there as well as, as well as some uh, EQ uh, just to give it a boost at around 50 to 60 hertz. And then a little cut at around 100 hertz. This cut here is to make room for the kick drum. So that's why this is here. So that's, that's the sub bass that's happening. And then we've also got this main bass here. Yeah, so it's doing the exact same pattern that the sub bass is doing, um, but it has just has a lot more uh, distortion, a lot more high end on it, and a lot. And I did a probably did a cut again. I bounced this down as well, but I probably did a cut 
up to about 100 hertz on that that way the sub bass could live down in here and then this bass here could live between you know 100 and 500 hertz and i got this bass sound both of these i think i used omnisphere uh, which is my go-to it's 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 an expensive piece of software for sure but i use it on literally every song i use it it's my go-to plugin for synths strings and so they have so many incredible sounds in their library so yeah they the omnisphere has some really good sounds and built in and uh so yeah, Omnisphere is a fantastic synth if you've got the money to spare. If you've got 500 bucks to spend and you make and you use a lot of synths and electronic elements in your music, I highly recommend Omnisphere. Now, moving on to this, see what else do we add here in this section? Okay, so we're introducing this um, staccato piano sound and also this string sound which those two together sound like this so let's start with this cello all this is doing is just a one note staccato and i got this from a string um vst instrument called area player and i just did a basic staccato cello and then also got the piano doing the exact same note I'm doing octaves on that and then putting those two together. Alright, and then and then the other thing that we're adding here in this section that we didn't have in the intro is some additional vocals. So I've got a double left and a double right, which this is a uh, two new takes for the lead vocal and they're panned left and right and they sound like this All my friends are heathens, take you with, slow. with the lead vocal wait for them to ask you who you so it just helps widen up that vocal and give it some more width and some more life and some more energy since we're moving from a softer section to building up to a little bit of a bigger section here i implemented some doubles and then i've also got see what is this oh yeah i forgot about this one so this is a um i copied the exact same um track from the lead vocal and then i tuned this down by a whole octave using little alter boys just straight forward i just put i again i have this already mixed down but it was just little alter boy with the pitch minus 12 and the formant all the way down as well to give it that really wolfy sound so that's what that sounds like <laughs> And 21 Pilots does that a lot. They really like to use that really monster kind of sound um, in their production. So, uh, and you can definitely hear it in this song as well. So yeah, that is. Those are all the new things that are happening in this section. And then finally, let's hop over to this big section, this payoff section of the song, which sounds like this. Everything is staying the same, except again, we're adding some new elements. So the, the big thing we're adding here is these drums. So we've got these saturated drums that are coming in here. Again, I've got these bounced down already, but again, it's doing the exact same thing. Uh, it's the exact same beat as the normal drums are doing. And it's got with with some added symbols uh, up top, and I I saturated the heck out of this using saturation knob, um, which I use on everything. This is a free plugin by Softube. It's 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 honestly this is an amazing plugin. I use this on everything. It's so easy to use. It's just a one knob saturation, and then I just left this at neutral and turn it up to about one o'clock and then i also added a faturator um, this is also comes with the slate digital um, pack this is one of their plugins and i've got the mix at about you know 
15 to 20 percent and that's awesome. <laughs> So yeah, that's what's happening there. So that really helps beef up that drum sound for the big section at the end. And then the other thing that we're adding here is, um, oh, I, f I forgot to talk about this piano lead that's happening uh, that also gets in in introduced in the chorus here. So let's talk about that real quick. Wait for them to ask you Yeah, so it's doing that little melodic thing. And um, I think what I did with this was I just used a lot of the same, I used a lot of the same um, plugins that was on the original piano chords, but I exaggerated them more. So I think I turned up the pitch effect even more, and I may have used a different piano preset to begin with, um, but I made it just a little bit more extreme with the pitchy haunting effect and I played around with this lead until I liked what I got. So yeah, that's what's happening there. And then, okay, so back to this last section here, the big section, um, the other thing that we're adding, so I added this robot vocal, I copied and pasted it, and I made another track just to make it, e just to add like a really huge robot All vocal track. And really compressed and really in your face, just to double down on that section. I just added some more reverb and delay essentially to this track and that's what I did with that. And then I added these uh, three background vocals here. All my friends are heathens, take it slow. So yeah, those are super auto-tuned um, and, and it's just a one note doing the exact same thing uh, that the robot vocal is doing except it's not formant isn't changed like it is on the robot vocal. And we, we've got this little watch it thing happening, and I got that just by doing, saying exactly that with the vocal. Watch it. And let me um, transform this. That way we can look at what I did on this one. Um, so we've got Little Alter Boy once again. It's a recurring theme uh, in this song for sure. So we've got the format minus 12, the pitch stays the same, and I added a little bit of drive to that, and that's what's giving this a super watch it sound. And then I've got the JJP vocals, which is just an all-in-one vocal plugin. It has EQ, compression, a bunch of different things. I'll use this if I want to just throw it on and, and uh, get me everything I need. Uh, and I use this on every demo that I do for my lead vocal. Cause, and it gets me in the ballpark of where I want to be, you know, EQ and compression wise. Usually when I'm mixing it, I'll go through my own process using, using individual plugins. But if, if I want just a straight up and a quick compressed and EQ sound tailored to vocal, the JJP from Waves is a fantastic plugin for that. And that's, I just slap that on there just to finish that up. And then we've also got this electric and then we've also got this electric guitar shot that's complementing that. It's got this like super metal kind of sound to it. And um, I'm using, this is being sent to, yeah, so I've got an amp here by Guitar Cool Rack, um, no, Guitar Tool Rack. Uh, this is from Waves. And um, yeah, I just use the Inferno app, which is super distorted. And then I put some uh, gate compression on there and um, got some EQ and some mic EQ turning down some of those high ends which I didn't need for that part and then some micro shift helping widen up that sound and those two together they sound like this <laughs> so yeah that's what's happening there and then we've got uh, these two more electric guitars panned hard left and hard right now I'm doing these are both of these are doing like power chords that I recorded with my Fender Telecaster um, but they're doing slightly different things. 
they're still both following the chords, but they're doing slightly different inversions. So like one is lower, one is higher on the neck. And um, what I also did was to pan them left and right. So I sent them here, I'm sending them to this one, right? Yeah, I sent them to this. And what's awesome about the GTR um, amp from Waves is you can do a stereo effect here where I sent, I panned the electric guitar left all the way left, and then I've got this panned all the way left. So that gets sent to this amp. The right guitar got sent to this amp, and and I adjusted the settings on this to be a different amp model. That way, um, we get a slightly different sound from right to left, which is really important, and it helps widen it up and give it a more of a pleasing tone and not so uniform um, across the stereo field. And so I even I, I just adjusted the cabinet. I think well, no. no it looks like we're using the same thing, but I, I did adjust the microphone that we're using, and I just the I adjusted the amp model as well as some of these parameters as well. And so yeah, that is what's happening with that. And then one more thing, we'll get to the bottom here, and we've got the strings that come in at the big section as well, which are such a vital part of this section. <laughs> So yeah, I just used, uh, I just did that melody line. Uh, this is a strings uh, sound in Omnisphere. And I layered that with a more realistic sounding cello. And then put them both together. So the cello here is an octave lower than this string and it helps beef up that bottom end of that string sound and everything together. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful. Please do me a favor and leave me a comment and let me know what is one thing that you found really helpful in this video and more importantly, what is one thing that maybe I left on the table, one thing that was a little confusing or that, or that I didn't explain right or something that you just want me to um, expound on more in the future? Please let me know and let's start a conversation in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next time. See ya.